Hi church, it's good to be with you again. We're going to be continuing our Bible study today, looking at the first half of Philippians chapter 2. So I uh, would encourage you to turn in your Bibles to Philippians 2, and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, again, we want to thank you for the day that you have given today. Thankful for the sunshine of today, the warmer weather, and just the, the opportunity that we might have to be able to enjoy this a little bit as we go on walks and uh, just to, to see the beauty of your creation. I ask, Father, as we come to this uh, really important section in Philippians 2, a section that, that talks to us about both the humanity and the deity of Jesus and helps us to see the, the beauty and the power and the complexity as well as the simplicity of, of who Jesus is. I ask, Father, again, that your Holy Spirit would um, illuminate our minds to understand and be able to apply the truths that we find here to our own lives. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're looking at Philippians chapter 2. I'm going to begin reading at verse 1. And again, I'm reading from the English Standard Version. So Paul writes this. He says, So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the very form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. <coughs> Excuse me. This is, uh, again, just a, a fantastic, rich section of scripture and it's a it's a section that um, is believed to be at least in verses uh, 6 through to the end there of verse 10 is be believed to be really the first hymn the first confession of faith the first uh, creed that the Christians in the 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 early part of the church had developed to talk about who Jesus is who who is this God man that has come together and that has brought salvation to mankind but before Paul gets there he wants to he, he's really wanting to talk to the Philippians themselves and to encourage them to to provoke them to to be living for Christ, living, living their lives in a way that, as he said at the end of chapter 1, is living their lives in a manner that is worthy of the salvation, worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so that's why he starts by saying, if, so if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, then make my joy complete. You know, essentially saying, Philippians, I, I care for you, I love you, and so if, if you wanted to just give me joy, then be these things to one another. Get, be encouraging and comforting and loving and participatory in the spirit, participating in the, in the church, in the life of the church, being affectionate towards one another, sympathetic, gracious, merciful, forgiving towards one another. And he, he inter, uh, undergirds this in verse 3 by saying, do nothing from rivalry or conceit. So, you know, don't be looking for envy. Don't be looking for a way to, to put somebody down or to, to, to get an edge up above them so that you can say, well, I'm a better Christian than that person. No, that's not to be the spirit 
of the people of God. The, the spirit of the people of God is to be building one another up in Christ. You again, yesterday, what we talked a little bit about there in chapter one is that idea that, that, um, we shouldn't be looking for ways to build, to, to break down the bride, to break down the body of Christ, to break down the church, but ways to lift it up. And whether that means that I am lifting up my church that I'm a part of, or I'm lifting up somebody else's church, again, the standard should not be how we do things. The standard should be, are we teaching and preaching the authentic gospel, the orthodox word of God, and the true word of God as we find it in the scriptures. That's what we want to be looking at. The styles we might use to make that happen are just that. They're styles. And we need to be open to, to allowing that to be the case. But are they teaching the word of God? Now, are they teaching in its fullness, teaching it so that Jesus is exalted and God is praised? And that, that too, is the attitude we are to have, not one of rivalry, not one of conceit. And he goes on to say, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Boy, I think that that is something that, that we often can take a, a page from to recognize that we need to be walking as Christians in humility and being humble before one another. And again, being humble, being, being in humility, as Jesus says in, the, in his Sermon on the Mount, blessed are the meek. Being meek does not mean that you are being a doormat. It doesn't mean that you let people walk all over you. It doesn't mean that you just kind of, oh, woe is me and I'm not going to stand up for myself. Being humble means that I'm going to recognize my own need for grace. I'm going to recognize my own need for salvation. My That I don't know it all. That I don't have all the answers. That I'm not the smartest guy in the room. And recognize that I too am a, am a man, maybe you're a woman, but I'm a person that is made in the image of God just as every other human being is. And I am also a person as a believer, as a follower of Jesus, that is in the process of sanctification as well. And so I need to cut people a break as I need to have a, a break cut to me. And I need to be gracious and I need to extend forgiveness and be willing to do the very things that God has done for me in Christ. Then in verse 4, let each of you look not to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Again, that ethic of Christian followers and of Christ followers, the ethic of being willing to, to lay ourselves out for others, which again, I think ties back into what Paul was talking about yesterday of the idea that for him to live is Christ and die is gain. How do I hold on to life with an empty hand and, and allow my life to be used? for others and for for a way to serve others that God's kingdom and God's purposes might be expanded. Now Paul shifts and says, listen, you, you do these things not just because you, you are doing them to make your, yourself feel good or, or in some way to earn your salvation because you can't do that, but you do this by looking at Jesus and looking at the Lord of glory, Jesus, the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, who has been always existent in, in eternity past. There's never been a time in which the Son of God didn't exist, but look at what he does, is what Paul's saying. He says, here the Son of God takes on the limitation of humanity. He, he, he condescends, he lowers himself, he humbles himself to be in the form of a human being. And that saying, when Paul says that, that, that he was in the form of God, that, that's a way of, of being able to express that he was God, that, that he exists as God, the second person of the Trinity, God the Son. Because he's going to contrast that with taking on the form of a servant. And that's not meaning that, that you know, Jesus just kind of appeared as a human being, kind of ethereal, maybe like a, a ghost or something like that. He truly was a human being. He took on that form. Okay, And so Paul says here, listen, I want you to have the same kind of mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Verse 6, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. And what Paul's getting at there is to say, Jesus does not look at his deity. God the Son does not look at his deity and say, I am going to continue to hold on to all the rights and privileges that I have as deity and not 
come and rescue my people. Not come and give them and provide for them the salvation that they need. I am willing to set aside that privilege, not becoming less than my godness, but to set aside that privilege for a time so that I can enter into humanity. I mean, I mean, think about that for a moment. I mean, th this is the God of the universe. There, there is no one higher than, than this being in the, in the entire universe and is looking at the creatures that he has created, looking at humanity, looking at the rebellion and the wickedness and all of the things that they have done to kind of thumb their nose at God. And God saying, God the Son saying, I'm going to join them. I'm going to go in weakness as a baby. I'm going to go and I am going to live the life they cannot live. I'm going to live a perfect life in their place. And I'm going to die the death they cannot die. I will die as a substitution for them. Taking on their sin as they trust in me alone and dying for that sin. I mean, that, that's, that's what Jesus is doing. And, and we, we, we should not see that as something small and insignificant. Because again, what Paul is saying here is, be willing, Christian, to do this yourself. To give of yourself to others the way that Jesus has humbled himself and given himself for you. Continues to go on, verse 8, being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, and where death being something that all human beings deal with, Jesus come, becomes obedient to the point of death, and Paul lays that out, even death on a cross. And he takes, he, he allows himself to be crucified, to be humiliated, and, and, and to die in one of the most horrifically painful ways man has devised, and does that for our salvation. Verse 9, the consequences of that are beautiful. Therefore, God has highly exalted him. That's, that is a, a picture of Jesus' resurrection. Highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I want to end with this today, just that, that scene there that every knee will bow in heaven and on earth to Jesus. That means someday every human being whether they have believed in Jesus or not for their salvation. So whether they, so, so the, those that have trusted Christ that we call Christians, that we call disciples and Jesus followers, or those, a person that does not trust Christ, that rejects Jesus, that wants nothing to do with Jesus, both of those people someday will bow. And what Paul is saying here is, Will you bow in, in exaltation and praise and bringing glory to God because you, you love Jesus the Lord? Or will you be forced to bow? Will you be forced to vow, bow and recognize whether you want to admit it in this life or not? Jesus is Lord. There are consequences to both. And I would encourage you to choose Christ, to choose to surrender your life to Jesus, to, to, to open your heart to Jesus and what he has done for you in, in purchasing salvation for you. Let's pray. Father, again, I want to thank you for this time that we've been able to have in your word. I ask Jesus that you indeed would would comfort our hearts today, that you would encourage our hearts, that you would give us, uh, that you would provoke us as well, Spirit. Holy Spirit, that, that you would use this, uh, this, this scripture 
to call us into action with one another, to measure whether or not we are truly living our lives as a reflection of what we see in Jesus. And I ask, Father, as well, that you would enable us to not only humble ourselves to serve, but to humble ourselves to receive, to receive the gospel and to respond positively to it, but to receive from others the, the, the service that they might want to give to us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you again tomorrow.